Hey guys, what's going on? Rounded Tic Tac here, and if you like this video, it's going to be a little bit different, but maybe subscribe. I'm not going to end it in a long tangent or anything, or give it a like if you're a fan of this channel. And if you guys want to come check us out when we do live stuff like this, twitch.tv slash rounded tic tac we'd love to see you there but i wanted to do this video a little bit differently and talk to you about endurance we did clear it but that's not really the whole point let's get into this fighting struggling and wasting a lot of batteries i wanted to jump back into endurance just to see if it's beatable after the trap changes and meta shift with 11.0 with the ongoing complaints one of them being that frost knight and endurance aren't really completable anymore i wanted to see it for myself just a little backstory i cleared endurance when it first came out 10.0 10.1 and solo cleared it around 10.1 10.2 but once the overlapping spawn started in 10.3 i never touched it again and it's been almost exactly an entire season and i finally came back in to see if it's even remotely possible anymore. See, I'm one of those people who thinks that we, and by we, I mean the heroes in the game, are quite powerful, and the nerf to the power level of the husks, plus our ability and health buff, might just even each other out, and will complement each other quite nicely. And in fact, this is exactly kinda what happened. Of course, we had our, an entire base set up, but you should have an entire base set up if you're trying to do Endurance and Twine Peaks anyway. It wasn't mine, it was a buddy from the stream, Wild, and he spent months and months perfecting and rerunning and getting every possible thing just about perfect. And that is something that you should expect to do within Twine Peaks Endurance. But besides that point, with the recent Trap, Smasher, and Propane changes, is it even possible to complete Endurance anymore? That's the question I set for myself, my team, and my stream. The main complaint I see is that the changes turned a game that was a hybrid third-person shooter slash tower defense game into a more run-and-gun playstyle, and you have no argument from me. This is definitely what happened. But the second complaint I see the most is that these modes were ruined, Endurance, Frost Knight, and are no longer playable due to these changes. Not that they are harder or more difficult, but they are ruined. And that's just not really the truth. It's still doable, and dare I say even fun, the health threshold on the last couple of waves, although very high, isn't completely unmanageable, and you may have to run a specific setups and ideas and using specific things, but that is what late game is, at least in the eyes of Fortnite for right now. You should have a vast majority of builds, team perks, support perks, weapons, heroes, whatever, and this should be one of the hardest things in the game to do. Now, do I agree with Epic Games' limited hero releases to induce FOMO, and FOMO is fear of missing out, to incentivize people to play all year long so they don't miss out on what might become a top meta perk or pick or hero or weapon? Blast from the past, totally rocking out, happy holidays, etc. No, of course not. It's not fair for players to suffer because they had school, work, they are moving, or other real life things that could possibly happen to them makes it so they cannot grab these best of perks. That is a terrible practice to apply to a game, any game in my opinion, especially one of those that is so niche like Fortnite Save the World, and drives more players away than actually attracts them to the game. Comment after comment I receive on YouTube is something along the lines of, you only use Totally Rockin' Out and I don't have it. Well, Epic Games says tough because it's not coming back for a while. There is no way to get this perk until the event rolls around again, which leaves players who already have the perk with exactly zero to do when that event rolls around again. And who the hell knows if the player that wants the perk will be playing in nine months from now when the event actually does roll around. Sorry for the tangent there, but I suffer from FOMO in real life. Uh, it induces my insomnia 9 out of 10 times, and I think it's a pretty crappy game practice in general for any game, let alone Fortnite or Epic Games Studios. Completing Endurance was not really a goal as of late. During these stagnant and stale waits for the next update, we were just looking for something to do. When Frost Knight 2.0 re-released and the enemy scaling plus trap changes virtually destroyed all resemblance of the mode, I thought to myself, well, maybe, just maybe, with all these changes they made, plus the incredible powerful weapons and guns and loadouts we have, maybe we can actually just kill the husks instead of trying to stall them out. 
When the enemies still were level 330 in Frost Knight, this was impossible. No matter how strong your loadout, how insane your weapons, the amount of health, because more health means harder content, I guess, was just too much to deal with. However, with the new max level in Endurance being only 243, it does become more manageable. An Epic employee once said that Smashers and other Mist Monsters were meant to be team objective. Well, it's really hard for something to be a team objective when there are 34 of them rampaging through your tunnels that can no longer take care of the trash enemies and end up just wiping you instead. If that was the case, you have to spawn less of them and let us focus them down. This statement is just a lie. You can say these things for the base game as there aren't smasher waves. Well, there are, but there's only three or four of them in the base game. And sure, your team stops what they're doing, hope your tunnel doesn't get wrecked, and take down the big guys. But anything higher, event-wise, Endurance or Frost Knight, any resemblance of the word teamwork goes right out the window. This right here is wave 25, what most people consider the hardest wave in the game. This is UFO wave, and this was the one where we almost came close to losing. Team objective, 37 smashers. I mean, just look at this nonsense that is coming down this tunnel. These enemies are no longer affected by any kind of traps that can slow them down except for tar pits, and tar pits are locked away to an event like we were talking about earlier. This is not fun. This isn't fair. This is not a team objective. When the Smashers outweigh the teammates two to one, you can't really say that they are easily taken down. And with the amount of health plus 900 other things going on at the same time, doing something like this is nigh impossible. I'm actually quite surprised that we were able to do this. Well, you can see here us taking down the UFO, but it shoots anyway. I die and that's fine too, but now our tunnel is ruined. Does it really matter too much? No, not really because the tunnels are kind of useless as is. Now we did have a specific loadout and I'll go over that loadout in another video. So if you guys wanna see that, make sure to subscribe because it's actually probably one of the best builds in the game and I wanna make a separate video about it. But again, you can just see the insane amount of enemies that are going off the smashers blasters takers flingers lobbers doesn't matter everything is coming towards the base and we get down pretty low here almost to the point where we lose the mission towards the end forget resemblance of teamwork how about resemblance of gameplay it's a mad dash of fast clicking buttons throwing up walls to attract the smashers because you can't kill them fast enough because there are just too many this is not Fortnite. This shouldn't be what Fortnite has become. And don't get me wrong, although I am trying to look at this objectively as possible, there are just some things in this game that aren't fair for the player. And something like this is definitely one of them. This was the hardest wave that we encountered and we were ready for it. We are top end players with every loadout you could possibly imagine. And something like this going wrong instantaneously, there's just too much on the map at one time to resemble anything that you can call teamwork. I think we can all agree that Fortnite Save the World is a more run and gun playstyle right now, and that's not a good thing. The reason for it, hopefully, if the trap changes continue to shift the way we think they will, is they want people coming over from Battle Royale, and let's be honest, it's a much larger player base, to have an easier transition into Fortnite Save the World. The issue with that, and this is an issue with every game developing company in the world, is keeping your player base who adopted the original game and new players happy and find a happy medium. It's almost impossible to do, and it, we can already see tangents of it here. The original player base doesn't like the trap tunnel changes because that's what they liked. They liked enjoying sending smashers flying. Look at David Dean, look at me, the trap tunnels series they just aren't the same anymore. And although endurance is doable with a few specific loadouts, weapons, heroes, and gear, it's not what it once was. And although we found success with those specific ideas and loadouts, it does not mean everyone will. A player can be 131 for months and still not have access to all the perks, heroes, weapons, and loadouts that are needed to do things like this. And that player is most likely going to give up and quit due to frustration, then stay around for another nine months waiting for that team perk that is in every content creator's video to roll back around.
that's really it guys i'm not backing up epic games here in fact what i think they did so unannounced and taking that long break although they deserve it just the timing was terrible during one of the events that we finally had a decent amount of content to sink our teeth into i feel like they could have came up with more things to change than just the one thing and then drop frost knight most people were looking forward to frost knight and heard it was the best event ever and they got this mess instead of a fun game mode like i said i'm not giving credence to what epic games is doing i'm just trying to take an objective and optimistic standpoint on the entire situation we completed endurance post 11.0 post the trap changes it is doable but it's not fair by any means that's really it guys i just wanted to do this video a little differently kind of like an essay format just give my thoughts there's a ton of things going on in the game right now so it's too much to cover all at once so at least we can take care of this one and check it off the list endurance my thoughts and everything else in between we're going to post the loadouts we did in this video in case you guys want to try it too because it might seriously just be the best build in the entire game and believe it or not it's fossil southy so stick around for that subscribe if you're new like the video if you can and thank you guys so much for watching if you want to see us do this live twitch.tv slash rounded tic tac and i'm not going to leave you guys hanging here are the rewards for endurance after 11.0